In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a business policy on eBay. The first step is to click on where it says hello and then your name at the top left hand corner and you should see an option that says account settings, you'll need to click on that. Now you would have arrived at the my eBay page, you want to make sure that the account section here is selected and if we scroll all the way down underneath the selling section here, you want to click on business policies. So this is the business policies page. What we're going to do here is just create a policy and we can go from there. So if you click create policy, you have these three to choose from. There is also the section at the bottom, but that is only relevant to vehicles. So we're just going to ignore that for now. eBay forces you to put in a policy name. So if we just label it as returns, just nice and simple and click save. The policy description is optional, but to save time, we'll just leave it blank. And for the majority of cases, you want to have set as default returns policy selected. The only instances where you wouldn't want to have this selected is if you had another return policy that overrides this one. But as this is our first one, we will definitely be having it selected. So you just tick the box here. So moving on to the actual return policy itself, I would just like to quickly highlight this line here. It says offering a minimum 30 day returns policy helps your listings qualify for eBay top rated seller benefits. If you are unaware, this is highly important as being an eBay top rated seller massively boosts your sales. So I would definitely abide by this rule. The first section up here is for domestic returns. And as you can see, we have a set of 30 days, but there are two alternate options, either 14 days or 60 days. But we'll keep it as 30 days. There is another section for return postage. We currently have it selected as buyer, but you can also make it seller, which essentially means that the buyer is having free returns. So if we just tick that there, we move on to the international returns. On my main account, I don't actually have the international returns accepted ticked. This is because international returns actually usually cost more than the product did itself. So it's not actually beneficial to have the item returned to you as the cost is so huge. If you did for some reason want to have it selected, these two boxes would just remain the exact same and you would click save. So as you can see, the policy is saved here. There is a few other options that I will just quickly go through. You can reassign the listings, delete the policies or clean up policies. You can click edit there and also there's another option here just to click edit. You can either copy or delete them here as well. And there's a few other options here like you can learn more and consolidate the postage policies there. But more or less, it's pretty straightforward. And that is the video. If you did find it helpful, we'd much appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.